Good day. At work, we've got a 3D printer which it's old, it's clunky, it doesn't work as well as it could, and so I thought the other day I might do a few modifications to it. One of the things I'd like to do is get the um, filament feeders and mount them on the, the print head, and that'll make things a little bit easier because we've got problems with, with uh, cables and tubes slipping off and all that sort of thing. But to do that, um, I've got to have a a threaded section and a threaded section meeting up and they've both got a, a, a conventional right hand thread to them and there are two of these things sitting side by side and so it's not just a matter of screwing a fitting in um, and off we go. Uh, there are a couple of ways of doing this and I'll get into those in a minute but uh, as a result I decided I'd make up some small V-band type fittings um, so that I can put that on one half, put that on the other half and then put the collar around there and secure that with a hose clamp um, to, uh, to do the job. And so that's, the, that's today's task. This is the basic uh, issue I have. I've got a block and I've got uh, the, the joining devices and then I've got two feeders here. Now these are only 26 millimeters apart which means, and, and they're, they're far deeper, which means I can put one in, but I can't put the second one in. Uh, it would, uh, you know, you'd try screwing it on and it'd hit the, the other thing. Uh, if this was a left-hand thread and that a right-hand thread, I could just hold it there and do those up and uh, wouldn't have a problem. But because of that tight spacing and the need for these things to be rigidly mounted, it gets tricky. The three options that are commonly used, you have a, a, a thread on one end and a, and a uh, a threaded socket on the other and you use something like a circlip to hold that on uh, and you can have various sort of uh, locating features on here if you wish but you put those together and you screw them up now for this particular application these tubes are around about or oh, 12 diameter and so I was a bit concerned that once I had 12 diameter and I had a, a nut of some decent size um, I'd be rapidly you know running into the possibility of hitting the other other part so that one while attractive not too bad another option is to put flanges on on both parts and then bolt those together now uh, once again that's not a bad idea but the diameter of those flanges is probably going to be similar to the diameter of that so that's a that's a little bit tricky the third option which is what I settled on is is basically what's used as a, as a v-band clamp it's uh, each side has got a, a flange on it or a, or a V or something like that and then you have a couple of clamping blocks that come on. Now these are, uh, are used in um, oh, exhaust systems commonly when you've got things that have to be demounted, demountable exhaust systems like for racing cars. Uh, so this, this is the sort of thing. My version is, is a rather crude attempt because I'm not quite sure how well, it'll, uh, how well it would work. Um, and uh, you know, commercially these things are made for bigger pipes and they've usually got several segments of V so that they can conform. I've just got two. Um, it, it works, but uh, you know, I think if, if I was doing this in the, in the future, I'd probably be doing something a little bit different. As far as clamping these together, there are two options that, um, well, there's probably more than two, but two that I came up on. One was a semicircular piece like that with a V in it. Uh, put two of those together and then use a, a worm drive ho hose clamp around that. Uh, I use worm drive hose clamps for a number of things and this is just a, another one for the list. The other possibility I guess is making up a couple of halves like so that, that bolt together and that's a possibility um, but once again I had that concern about the space that I'd, I'd need um, between the two parts to be able to do that because not only do you have to be able to get that uh, clamp on there, you also need to be able to manoeuvre it so you can do it up and, and undo it. So even if I had, um, say, you know, from, from that face to there was, say, 12 millimetres, uh, I wouldn't necessarily be able to get that off easily because I couldn't swing. I started, for want of a better term, roughing out my, uh, my fittings. Um, so if you look at the drawing, uh, I've got a large diameter there, I've got a smaller one there, I've got a smaller one there, and then I've got a recessed diameter there. So I've taken that down to the large diameter and then taken it down to that diameter, stopping at the, you know, the start of the large diameter there, and then I've taken this one down to here. Uh, now that's all good. Apologies for the rather torn and crumpled looking drawing. Uh, I 
made the parts yesterday, screwed it up and popped in the bin. And then when I was doing my post-production stuff, editing, uh, I noticed I'd moved out of shot on this drawing. So um, trying to fix that. So what I was saying, um, and I hope the continuity is all right here, is that this time into here, I left at that point. Then I can come in with my 60 degree tool, line that up in the corner, and that gives me my how far I have to go. But I also can take the tip down to that surface and come across, and that gives me an idea as to where the end of that tip has to be. Once I've got that in, I can then come in with my, my tool and um, take that down to final size. Just thought I'd mention a bit about the thread cutting I've done here. I started cutting that with a die, and I've got a, a holder that goes on the lathe tailstock, and that cuts that quite nicely, but it didn't quite come down to the end. So I pulled out one of these. This is called a die nut. Uh, and these are a closed die, um, but you use those with the spanner. And they're most, mostly used for maintenance type purposes, so that if, you've, if you're in the field somewhere and you need to repair a thread, um, you can run this down there and that'll that'll size it up for you nicely and all that sort of thing. But uh, for this particular application, just to get a, a, a thread right down to the bottom there and to uh, get it to a, to a final size, uh, very handy. If you're the sort of person who, who has to go out and repair uh, threads on things uh, and uh, find taking a, a um, you know, a die and a die handle um, not quite working for you. Uh, have a look at die nuts. They're not, uh, they're, 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 it's a specialist fastener type product again, uh, specialist fastener outlets, but uh, they're, they're worthwhile uh, if you have to uh, repair threads or in this case, uh, just size it because I know that, that that size will be pretty much bang on what I need. Here are my two uh, fittings, studs, whatever you want to call them. I did make an error when I did this one uh, in that I drilled all the way through from here to here. Uh, it was a four millimeter drill uh, and that's about 35 millimeters so it's certainly um, you know, quite a reasonable distance in terms of the number of, of drill diameters and it was slightly off, only about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a millimeter but I was concerned that this hole had to line up with this hole um, when these two are concentric so I've actually gone and, and uh, um, I used a, a four millimeter slot drill and I just sort of neatened that hole up and then a needle file inside just to, to smooth things out. The rest of them uh, I solved that problem by drilling sort of halfway through and then uh, flipping it over and drilling in the other, other way and uh, if you can imagine if a drill bit deflects uh, a certain amount per you know, distance it's drilled, uh, that would mean that, well, fingers crossed, the, the amount of any deflection is going to meet in the middle there somewhere, and it'll be around about equal. Um, now, whether this one deflects this way and this one deflects this way is another matter, but uh, at least I've got this hole, you know, central from this end and central from this end, and similarly with this bit now. So they go like together like that. I'm now going to make the clamp pieces. Um, once I've got those, I can try them for fit. And I've left these a little bit long. And so I'll put these back up into uh, the three jaw. And I'll just skim off the, the, uh, the face there until I get the fit that I'm after. Um, otherwise, yeah, I could have a sloppy fit. And I'm really after something that's, that's going to hold and, 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 be, and be firm. Uh, in use, they're going to be like that. Uh, so, um, yeah, I don't want this bit here, you know, flopping around um, in, a, in a strange way. I've started making my clamping piece. It's just a bit of brass because that's what I had about the right size. Um, possibly a little expensive, but there you go. Looking through my box of old cutters, I found this one. Uh, and I've just ground it to a 60 degree shape with my, my fishtail gauge. Uh, yes, that's the right side. So I'll set that up and then I just do a need to do a plunge cut into the side of the the, um, the material here uh, as I would if I were um, well putting a groove or anything like that in there. Um, 
but set it up square with the with the fishtail gauge and uh, that way I'll have my V in there I can then uh, turn the outside down put the shape on that part it off split it and then I can use that to check the fit of my uh, fittings first clamping bush thing made uh, I'm now going to slice that in half and just see how good the um, the V groove is on the inside. I know I had a bit of trouble when I was making it. Uh, I I didn't back the tool far enough out, and I've gouged a little bit there. But I'm hoping that the the, the groove is going to be good enough to pull those two bits in uh, without having to um, uh, do anything drastic to it. So we'll we'll see how that all works. That's the inside of the um, the bush. Uh, there's a slight witness mark there where I've I've run into the side, but I think that should be all right. And now you can see the, how this thing is meant to work. Uh, that 60 degree bevel there is meant to go in there and the other one comes over here and because these are a bit thicker it's not nesting in there just as it should but the idea is that they'll, that'll hold in there and then with the hose clamp around the outside that should strap everything up tight. So uh, I, I'm now going to make up a second one of these and then um, start tuning these to, uh, to size. Well I regard that as a result. Um, and, that, and, and that's the nice thing about having that step back there is that you can use that to measure that thickness. And so the first one I mucked up but uh, subsequent ones and so I had to match the other side to it. But uh, these two um, are uh, you know really nice fit. The other half will... which, which way up is that? I put some dots on here just in case I had to match them, and I think I will. Um, but that will that will hold on there with a hose clamp and um, do the job. So I'm I'm very pleased with that. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how well this would work, but it seems to work uh, nicely. So um, yeah, that's the result. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you for the next one.